impact grief, balloon sphingeroplasty. Balloon dilation of the sphingera OD with over the wire, non compliant balloon catheters allow clearance of the common biotic stones by primarily utilizing the cell mirror technique, which is familiar to most general surgeons. While balloon catheters have traditionally been marketed to perform cystic duct dilation to allow for cholidocoscope insertion, balloon dilation of the sphincter of OD can facilitate forward flushing of stones into the duodenum. By flushing stones forward, the potential problem of attempting to remove stones retrograde through a cystic duct that is too small to accommodate the basket and capture stone is avoided. It should be noted with the following steps that any manipulation of the balloon forwards, backwards, inflation or deflation should be done under direct thoroscopy. The first step is to advance a 0.035 floppy tip glide wire through the uterial stent into the duodenum. This glide wire should be advanced a significant amount as it is actually very easy to lose wire access with a slick hydrophilic glide wire that is tensioned by various twists and turns in the biliary tree. Step two, remove the stent and leave the glide wire in place. Oftentimes, we will grab the wire intra-abdominally at the side of the ductotomy to prevent the wire from springing back and losing access. It should be noted that we do leave the wire in place for the majority of the steps below, with the exception of when we're performing a cholangiogram or power flushing. Step three, advance the balloon catheter over the wire all the way into the duodenum. Step four, Inflate the balloon using a rotational inflation device that contains a 50-50 saline contrast mix. Step five, pull back on the balloon gently to ascertain the exact location of the sphincter complex. This allows for both tactile and visual feedback as to the exact location of the sphincter. With balloon manipulation, the location of the sphincter can be altered as compared to the initial cholangiogram. Step six, deflate the balloon and pull back to straddle the sphincter, ensuring that sphincter is halfway between the marks on the balloon. Step seven, inflate the balloon to dilate the sphincter. A waist should be seen to indicate correct placement of the balloon. Step eight, Bring the balloon up to profile slowly with elimination of the waste. Do not inflate the balloon beyond the rated pressure indicated by the manufacturer. Leave it in place for several minutes. We typically leave it in place for up to three to five minutes. For balloon size, we recognize the sphincter must not be dilated greater than the size of the pathologically dilated common bile duct. Step nine, deflate the balloon and retract the balloon to the cystic common duct junction. All these steps can be performed while still maintaining glide wire access across the sphincter. This makes antegrade and retrograde of the balloon catheter safer and easier. Step 10, partially inflate the balloon to where there's just apposition between the balloon and the wall of the duct. This creates a seal and prevents reflux of stones and contrasts during this step. Next, remove the wire and perform power flushing along with a final cholangiogram. This is done through the balloon catheter. Supplies needed for balloon sphincteroplasty. 12 gauge angiocatheter. Six French ureteral stent. an 035 floppy tip guide wire, a five French angioplasty catheter that has a balloon diameter of six to eight millimeters, balloon length of 40 millimeters, and a total catheter length of 75 centimeters. A rotational inflation device, a three-way stopcock with extension tubing, two 60cc syringes, and contrast and saline.